Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Calvin here. So, what's up? Definitely not Palantir. It has gone down by almost 70% since its peak last year. On and off, there were many people asking me what I think about Palantir. And with this recent drop, I figured that it was a good time to finally talk about Palantir. So, in this video, I will explain what is Palantir, why did the stock drop by so much, I will also take a look at its financials to see whether it's a good company or not. Because, you know, a stock isn't always about stock price, stock price. Finally, I will share what I like about Palantir and what are its risks. But before I start, I would greatly appreciate it if you can help to tap the like button because it will help out with the channel. In return, I will show you someone belly rubbing a tiger in Russia. Okay, before I continue, here's a quick disclaimer. No, I'm not making this video to pump up Palantir. I don't even have Palantir in my portfolio. Lah. The main reason for making this video is just me trying to understand a bit more about Palantir so that I don't sound like an idiot when the cool guys are talking about the company. Okay, with that being said, let's continue on. First up, let's talk about what is Palantir. In very, very simple terms, Palantir is a company that specializes in big data analytics. If you don't know what I just said, don't worry. Ah. I also don't know what I just said. Ah. But let me try to explain. Palantir has three products. Foundry, Gotham, and Apollo. I'll first start with Apollo because it's the easiest to explain. And no, Apollo is not the Apollo advertisement that you always see on TV. The Apollo here is just an operating system that manages and deploys both Gotham and Foundry to the customer's system. Okay, yeah. Next, Foundry. Foundry is used by commercial clients to manage their business data. Okay, here's an example. These are the data of a manufacturing plant. Yes, sensor data from plant operations logistic data from distribution centers, or financial data from ERP systems. When you combine all the data, you can have a quick overview of everything. For example, you can see customer and distribution centers by city, demand alerts, and demand versus production. So the god -like thing about this foundry is that it doesn't just let you see the data, it also lets you use the data. For example, the system discovered a raw material that will expire soon. It notifies the sales manager, then identifies potential sales opportunity so that the material won't go to waste. A while ago, Foundry also helped UK with its COVID vaccination program. It helped the government see what's the progress, constraints, and any inequalities. Then, let them explore all the different strategies to achieve their goal. For example, they can decide to route more doses through GP so that they can cover more NHS staff. But with this, they will need to increase the number of PPE. The system will let them see what will happen if they decide to do this. If everything is alright, Foundry can send the orders to action the plan. So, that's an example of how Foundry works. Foundry has been used in many places. For example, help utility companies look for outages or potential risk of wildfire, World Food Program in delivering food to people in need, or used in fighting child exploitation. Next, let's talk about Gotham. While Foundry is used by commercial clients, Gotham is used by governments. So, here's an example of how Gotham is used in the military. In this case, they can see that there's increased level of military activity. Then, they can see what actions they can take, then send the order. Like, super advanced though, it's like, it's like we are living in 2022 or something. Ah. There's a few more use cases of Gotham. It's used to fight terrorism or investigate frauds. It was even rumored that Gotham was used to catch Osama Bin Laden. So, those were just some of the use cases of Foundry and Gotham. There are way more stuff that they are used in like AI, cryptocurrency, financial services, health and life sciences, and so on. Okay, next, let's talk about Palantir stock. Specifically, why did the stock drop by so much? Actually, it's not just Palantir. It's basically all the other growth stocks that were going to the moon in 2021. Stocks like Tesla, Netflix, Spotify, Square, Robinhood. So, if majority of your portfolio is in these stocks, I feel you bro. Then, when Palantir reported their earnings on February 17, their stock fell by another 15%. The main reason for this drop was that it missed earnings expectations and it lost even more money compared to last year. But when I checked their earnings report, things don't look as bad as they seem. Here's why. First, growing revenue. In the latest quarter, their revenue went up by 34% to $433 million. And if you look at the revenue over the long term, it's actually steadily increasing. And this is good, right? Basically, it just means that the company has the potential to grow its business. Second, losing more money. The company lost more money compared to last year. However, this is not a big issue because a huge part of the loss is just the company reinvesting in itself. Fun fact, this was exactly what Amazon previously did. 
Amazon was making losses till very recently. This is not because Amazon is a bad company. Ah. Instead, its sales were actually increasing over time. The reason Amazon was making losses is because it was reinvesting the money back into itself, like building more data centers, upgrading distribution networks, and creating wind and solar farms. And now, Amazon has went to the moon. For Palantir's case, if you look at sales and marketing and research and development, they add up to about 60% of the operating expenses. Sales and marketing just means that they are using the money to acquire more customers. And if the customers sign up, oh, their profits will increase over time. Palantir's business model has three phases, acquire, expand, and scale. In the acquire phase, Palantir will charge little to nothing for their services. Then as the customer's business grows, it will move to expand phase, then finally scale phase. For example, if you see their US commercial revenue, the 2018 cohort is increasing. Same for the 2019 cohort or the 2020 cohort, which also increased. Same for the government revenue, 2017 and earlier cohort increasing, 2018 cohort increasing and so on. Next, research and development just means that they are improving their products, which will again give high returns over the long term. So even though Palantir lost more money now, there's nothing much to be worried about. Third, revenue growth. So one of the biggest issues about Palantir is that the government revenue can only grow so much. This is because Palantir has very high security level clearance. Even other companies like Google is only at level 2. Because of this, Palantir can't be used by other governments like China and Russia. No, not because US don't like to share share, but because it's dealing with top secret stuff. So it's sensitive stuff, yeah. Because of this, Palantir's government revenue growth is slowing down over time. At the start, it was at 76% and now it's only at 26%. However, this is not an issue because Palantir's commercial growth is growing fast, growing from 19% to 47% currently. Palantir has estimated that its current total addressable market is about $56 billion for the commercial side and $63 billion for the government side. And it will continue to increase every year, which means they still have a lot more room to grow. So in short, even though Palantir's government revenue growth is slowing down, the company is still confident of achieving a 30% annual growth rate for the next 5 years. Fourth, no debt. If you look at Palantir's balance sheet, you can see that in recent quarters, they have basically no long-term debt. What this means is that it's very hard for Palantir to go bankrupt. It's hard, lah, not impossible. Lah. Got difference when. If you look at any company, the reason they go bankrupt is because they have too much debt. For example, high flux debt kept increasing over the years. And because of that, they are closed shop. But in Palantir's case, they are consistently earning more and more money, have zero debt, and has over $2 billion cash reserves. This means Palantir won't be closing shop anytime soon. Okay, it seems as though everything is awesome in Palantir's financials. However, here's a few potential risks that I want to point out. First, share dilution. If you look at Palantir's outstanding shares, it's slowly going up over time. This is because the company is doing stock-based compensation to its employees. What this means for investors is that over time, your ownership of the company becomes lesser and lesser. But personally, I'm not too concerned about this as long as the company can continue to grow. Second, customer concentration risk. Palantir has about 237 customers currently. If any of the major customers pull out, or oh, Palantir business will be affected. You can see it happening for the 2017 and earlier cohort, which is slowly becoming smaller. I'm not too sure why this is happening. One of my guess is that Palantir is losing its mode. For the government side, Palantir has no competition. In 2016, it won a lawsuit against the US Army, which forces US government agencies to use a commercial product rather than to self-build if there are better products out there. In this case, it is Palantir. So you can be sure that once the government starts using Palantir, they will keep using Palantir for a very long time, aka wen wen jia fi hun. But like I showed you just now, the government revenue is slowing down. So Palantir's future growth depends a lot more on its commercial side. I have tried searching for Palantir's commercial competitor. I couldn't find any existing competition. However, that's something I found. Palantir's real competition could be the client's own data team. Some companies prefer to build their own data solutions instead of relying on third parties. But with that being said, personally, I feel that Palantir's customer concentration risk will become lower over time as they acquire more and more customers. Finally, here are my thoughts. I feel the company has a healthy balance sheet, good future, and best of all, wide mode. And add to the fact that the stock has definitely become a lot more cheaper after the crash. 
planted is very attractive now. Would I buy the stock? Maybe. But even if I do so, I will only buy a bit a bit. Ah, don't get me wrong. Ah. I feel that Planted is a good stock. The only thing that's stopping me from investing a huge portion of my money into Planted is only because the company is a huge black box and I don't fully understand the company. To me, there are way easier companies to invest in like Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Tesla. So anyway, that's my research on Palantir. Hopefully, after this, you know a little bit better about the company. But do let me know what you think. Is it a good company or is there anything else that I missed? Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.